Hello my fellow gamers and welcome to Peter's channel for the top 13 new city building simulation games that are coming out in 2021. My name is Evie and I'm happy to be here and present all of these new games to you. This video is just part of a playlist dedicated to new games coming out in 2021. Previous videos showcased 4X, turn-based and grand strategy games as well as RTS and base building games while in the next ones you'll get to see new management, simulation and tactical squad combat strategy games. The first part of this video will cover games based on historical settings in a chronological order, while the second part will cover more fantasy-based games. So let's travel 5,000 years into the past and see how some of the first large-scale cities looked like and what monuments were their landmarks. The setting of Nebuchadnezzar is ancient Mesopotamia, where entire cultures developed, grew and fell one after and on top of the other for thousands of years. This game is a throwback to the classic isometric game design many of you undoubtedly still hold dear to your hearts and the developers from Nepos Games certainly know this. During the campaign, players will get to rule over influential historical cities filled with magnificent monuments they will design and construct. The 16 historical missions start with colonization of ancient lands and end with the conquest of Babylon by the Persians in the 6th century BC. Gameplay-wise, players will get to manage everything from plowing fields to creating products, as they must oversee agriculture and the manufacturing of goods for the city's population. Nebuchadnezzar features an in-game monument editor, giving the players complete control over their monument's design. From structural design to colour schemes to final details, it's all in the hands of the player. Modders will be able to create their own buildings, goods and monuments. In addition, they can invent new missions and campaigns. A closed beta is already playable and the game will be out really soon. Another game which covers this time period and uses the same settings is Sumerians, developed by Decamanus Games. Its gameplay starts with players being given free reign of a small settlement near a river. They must build, develop and manage a food producing and distribution chain if they want to attract more settlers. The economy starts with harvesting or mining, after which transport moves goods, which then you store and use either locally or trade to make profits. But food is not the only thing new settlers desire, and so building temples and hiring priests to increase religious reputation is also necessary. Because this game will not feature battles or army management, players will be able to enjoy peaceful city building. But citizens will still want strong and high walls to keep them safe, and these will be a requirement for levelling up homes. This advancement of citizens dwelling through fulfilling increasingly complex demands is a characteristic feature of these kinds of games, and so it is a basic gameplay mechanic in this one as well. Providing services like access to water, guard posts, or beautification is the way for your citizens to reach a high standard of living. As for monuments, you will get to build a great ziggurat, and it will increase your religious efforts, letting you achieve new levels of fame. Another landmark feature in your cities will be the canals which are dug to increase irrigated areas and spread out farmable land. And this is exactly what the ancient Egyptians relied heavily upon in their own desert homeland in approximately the same time frame. Developers from both Rocket Flare Studios and Strategy Labs use this for the setting of their games called Dynasty of the Sands and Builders of Egypt. Dynasty of the Sands focuses on survival, expansion, and creativity as it lets the players experience the open world environment with seasons, a day and night cycle, weather, wildlife, disease, and more, as they attempt to build a paradise along the banks of the Nile in order to help their population prosper. Gods play an active role in this game, and the player has to build statues, shrines, and temples to appease them, even going as far as making sacrifices to avoid their wrath. Completed pyramid levels grant power from the gods, which is used to unlock technologies and go a long way in gaining god's favour. But these pyramids require vast amounts of quarried rocks to construct. Sandstone blocks and limestone casing become a valuable commodity as you expand your monument. The villages also require a careful guiding hand and you must provide water source, food, shelter and entertainment to ensure they remain happy and healthy. All of this requires different kinds of resources and in large amounts. Primary resources like mud and flax can be grown and extracted, while secondary and tertiary resources like mud brick and pottery must be crafted within a series of production buildings. These gameplay mechanics are also present in the next game on our list called Builders of Egypt, in which you play through the birth of Old Egypt and finish with the death of Cleopatra VII. The most important aspect of this game is the skillful management of urban planning by shaping the grid of streets, placing buildings, and watching out for their mutual relation. 
A well-designed city will greatly improve the economic efficiency, which helps to generate a city's income. Where Builders of Egypt goes further than previous games is trade, diplomacy, politics, and warfare. It sets you up on a world map with multiple cities to trade with and develop economic ties and relationships. You can trade purely for profit's sake or to get what you can't produce in your own city and lands. While taxes are a constant source of income, trade profits are needed to pay for many more lavish things like bribes, gifts, expeditions, armies, and major construction projects, including mastabas, obelisks, temples like the one in Karnak, or the memorial temple of the pharaoh, and of course, the pyramids. The players will get occasional requests from the local rulers, and if they decide to disobey those requests, they risk getting tangled in a civil war. That is why they'll need to recruit armies, build fortifications, defend their cities from foreign military attacks, and even send out forces on Pharaoh's call. Now moving north, on the other side of the Mediterranean Sea, we come to the realm of ancient Greece. The year is 800 BC, give or take a few decades, and even that word is Greek in origin. The developers over at Cerberus, again, more Greek culture reference, a mythological creature of Greek legends, are making a city building game with RTS elements called Pelagos, Rise of Greece. The game doesn't have much of a storyline besides explaining that the king has sent you to found a new colony and you manage to lose most of the ships in a storm at sea, leaving you with limited resources and settlers. From this humble beginning, it is up to you to build a prosperous city, develop its economy, muster an army and build high walls because Persians are going to invade really soon. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, I've already mentioned the Persians, as they were the nation that conquered Babylon in ancient Mesopotamia, which was the setting for the first game on our list. Ah, history is so interconnected. Anyway, in Pelagos Rise of Greece, there is going to be a day and night cycle, both naval and ground combat. The fortifications you build will be modular and walkable, meaning you can put troops on them. And the procedural campaign will be based on a map of ancient Greece, keeping the historical accuracy high. Another game with this setting is by the developers over at Creative Forge Games. They have chosen to show the golden age of Hellenic city-states, which is a few centuries further along in time. The gameplay in Builders of Greece is based on the formula I have already laid out with the previous games. The unique spin in this game are the advisors you can appoint to help create the Cradle of Liberty and Science, and in doing so unite the city-states in a nation. Of course, you can also just conquer them all. The game will feature a competitive mode which will let you see just how highly your creation scores when compared to other players. You will even get to throw period-accurate parties for your population, largest of which is called Dionysia a festival held in ancient Athens in honor of the god Dionysus. Now, before we move on to a fresh setting, let me remind you to hit that like button below if you have been enjoying this video and tell me in the comments section, what is your favorite city building game of 2020? Which strategy game are you looking forward to the most in 2021? And for the next game, we have to travel far away, both in time and space. We are going to take a look at Aztec Empire, a city building strategy and city manager. Just by looking at it, you can tell this is a complete throwback to the classic isometric look and feel. If you've played the original Pharaoh and Caesar, you will feel right at home here. But don't worry, as while population and worker agents function just like in those games, this one does feature roadblocks, so relax and enjoy the rest of the showcase. For those of you who don't understand the relevance, trust me when I tell you, you only missed out on getting additional grey hairs and possibly smashing a keyboard or two. Aztec Empire is set between the 13th and 16th century CE, where the player takes on the role of the ruler responsible for building and bringing to splendour the magnificent Aztec city-state before the Spanish came to wreck it all. The gameplay won't feature many surprises and will have all the expected elements like road layouts, upgrading settlers' homes with access to new goods and luxury items, harvesting production chains, trade, religion with goods, priests, temples, and even disasters. Now it's time to jump all the way forward to our modern time and take a look at City State 2 by Andy Stark. The developer has built this game himself and it's quite an upgrade compared to the first game. Players of the Sim Cities and City Skyline franchise will find themselves right at home here with roads, avenues, highways, RCI zones, utilities, and services. But in the game, you will have much more to control over who moves into your city, almost akin to Tropico and its immigration policies. And those are not the only policies you can enact. As the player, you'll have the ability to manage practically everything, the economy, religion, trade, banking, social security, and more. The aim of the game is to ultimately create a whole new nation through chain city building on a huge map which supports up to 64 individual cities. These cities will be interconnected 
connected and will be able to interact through the workforce and budget, something like those massive maps in SimCity 4. The city services like fire, police, healthcare and the respective buildings will be upgradable in the sense that the player will not have to build more of them to have better service, but rather increase their staff and workforce manually. I have my fingers crossed over here for this game, as it has high potential, but how it will really play out remains to be seen. And with this we end our journey through history and enter the fantasy part of this list. First of these games which we will take a look at is called Dream Engine's Nomad City by the developers over at Suncrash. This is a survival city building game with cities which can lift off and fly away. This means that the player will get to build, automate and defend a flying city to survive in a wacky, nightmare infested, post apocalyptic world full of strange science and dreams. The reason for flying across the game world are its post apocalyptic state, monsters which inhabit it and the search for scarce resources and old world tech. This unique gameplay is balanced in such a way that players have to manage their cities as to keep it fueled up and light enough to be able to fly away from danger, but also sturdy and adequately defend to stay long enough to complete the mission's objectives. This directly means that you will spend resources each time in infrastructure you will not be able to bring along to the next mission. So proper management of limited resources will be a key part of gameplay. The space inside the city is also limited and will force the player to become proficient at creating production lines which fit the confines of the city, but also produce everything necessary for survival and advancement of tech. But how about we now go even deeper into science fiction territory with a game about sentient beavers as the creator society of lumberpunk after the downfall of humankind. This is the setting of Timberborn, a city building simulation by the developers of Mechanistry, which should be ready for an early access release quite soon. Wood is the core resource in Timberborn, but the most advanced structures will require metal. To find it, players will have to send scavengers to the ruins of the old world. These beavers are organised into families and those families into colonies. Your own colony settlement can be built using a modular vertical architecture system. In Timberborn, space isn't infinite, so you'll have to stack logs and workshops on top of each other, cover hills with fields and set up a power grid for your growing population. As mentioned, these beavers are evolved creatures and they require creature comforts akin to those of humans. Besides the fulfilling job and a nice bed to sleep on, you need to provide them with a balanced diet, decorations, temples, even carousels. Happy beavers are productive beavers, and those will unlock additional beaver families, each with unique style and traits. While one family might be okay working long shifts, another would rather focus on increasing the population, and this will bring a more complex gameplay for the players. It's quite the original approach to this game subgenre, and quite cute if I may add. A map editor is also in the works as well as a day and night cycle, with actual gameplay mechanics connected to it, rounding up this game as a definite addition to my wishlist. And speaking about my wishlist, this next game is already on it ever since I saw the first trailer and Kickstarter pitch. The Wandering Village is this really creative undertaking by the developers of the Stray Fawn Studio. This is a unique game by a number of things. First and foremost, the city you will be building in this game is located on the back of a giant wandering creature, hence the name. Secondly, your villagers in this game have to keep a symbiotic relationship with the creature on whose back they live in order to survive, mimicking our real world and how we should be living with nature instead of against it or despite it. The reason why your villagers have chosen this unlikely place for their home are the mysterious toxic spores which are contaminating the planet. Both the giant creature and your villagers are trying to outrun the expanding gas, and that it is the main reason for your players to help maintain the creature's health and build a trusting relationship with it. Because of this setup, the space to build the city, more a village really, is very limited. The players will have to plan, build, expand, and optimize their village to use the limited space as efficiently as possible to ensure the survival of the villagers. A way to get more supplies from the world is by sending out scouting parties to explore the different biomes and discover rare resources, which they will haul back to the main village. This is a true indie gem, so keep your eyes out for it. Another city building game which boasts of roguelite elements is set in a fantasy world tormented by the everlasting rain and it is called Against the Storm. The developers from Earmite Games have designed this game so each playthrough will be a unique adventure for the player. Some of the main features are managing a city inhabited by three races with different needs and skill sets, these being the humans, the beavers and the lizard folk, building and growing a city that will endure harsh weather conditions and gathering scarce resources and processing them into valuable goods, the most essential of them being hearth-keeping fuel. 
The idea is to settle the unknown wilds in order to discover and rebuild the ruins of a long forgotten civilization, with the aim to develop technologies that will help your citizens tackle destructive storms and extend the frontier of your civilization. Every reclaimed ruin will increase your building's collection. You will need to optimize your set and test different strategies with each run to thrive in a world where it never stops to rain. This rain is your ally and the greatest enemy. It cycles in three seasons requiring you to stay flexible and adapt to changing conditions. In Drizzle, the season of regrowth, natural resources replenish themselves, and it's time for construction and planting crops. The Clearance is the season of harvest, expansion, and the preparation for the last, most unforgiving season of them all. A true test of your city's strength comes with the storm, when bolts of lightning tear the sky, nothing grows, and resources are scarce. And with this we come to the last game on our list, which also features nature at its worst. Make Your Kingdom. This is one from the developer team called Yo Sergio, and Peter has already covered it in more depth a while back, but since it's been updated and polished, so it deserves a spot on the list. In Make Your Kingdom, you get to do exactly what the name suggests. You're a founder of a new settlement, which you must develop and keep safe from the local bad guys. Your every settler is unique in their own way, and this has consequences on gameplay. To make your people happy, you need to make sure that everyone has a roof over their head and that everything meets their needs. Happy people will help you expand your kingdom, while unhappy ones will join the orcs and try to destroy everything you've built. You will also have to develop infrastructure to make your settlement more attractive to new settlers. Construction and improvement of your buildings requires a variety of resources. In order to gather these resources, you need to have gathering, processing and manufacturing buildings and to keep them in good condition. A very cool gameplay feature is the ability to drop down your view down to the eye of a single settler and literally walk through your own creation. You can also meet some orcs face to face, sword to sword this way as well. And with that we end this list my fellow gamers. I hope you have enjoyed this rundown of 13 up and coming city building simulation games for 2021. More videos are on the way and they will be posted here as cards on the screen. If you have enjoyed my voice and presentation I want to invite you to check out my channel where I play games and get into some all round shenanigans. Link is in the description. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!